Hello, in this lesson we are going to look at how blockchain can revolutionize data storage and more specifically I should put cloud storage because there's two general sort of aspects that it can benefit the consumer side and the business side we'll cover both first of all let's cons not consume let's cover the consumer side the consumer side and this is essentially stuff like Dropbox and Google Drive the non-business version because they both do business versions as well but this like you would get this automatically with your Gmail account you get some storage free I believe it's 15 gigabyte and Dropbox you can create a free account and get free storage as well you can pay to get more storage if you so want to so general concept you upload your files to either Google servers Dropboxes or if you're using Microsoft cloud storage or some other service you upload it to their servers so uh, let's draw a little file so this is a word document and this gets uploaded so uploaded and now this resides so this is essentially a super server so I don't know why it would be a super server, but it is just a super server, and this contains a bunch of files. So let's draw some files here. So it contains loads of files. There could be multiple servers, most likely there will be, especially for redundancy purposes. But let's just say in this scenario, this one, keep it simple. And our file is let's say this one right here. So we upload it if we want to retrieve it. A lot of time you can go onto their website, view the file, you can even edit it, you can download it, you can have it on your phone, all of that really, really cool stuff. Benefit of this is it's not restricted to, to the one machine. As long as you got internet, you can access it anywhere. And that's a really powerful concept because honestly, I, I still remember a time where I wasn't using cloud storage and I remember how annoying it was, you know, carrying USBs around. I still have USB devices, USB storage devices, but for usually for various other reasons, such as being able to transport big files or quickly get a file. But my general files that I'm accessing on a regular basis, I, I, I store them on cloud storage and, and I can just access them anywhere. Also, if, for example, they're on your computer and your computer breaks for whatever reason or you lose it, it doesn't matter. With it being on cloud storage it's on their servers so as long as their servers are okay which you generally just trust that these big company servers are going to be fine then nothing's going to be an issue and you can just access it anywhere so it's not restricted to one little machine so the decentralized nature of it is obviously we've discussed how decentralized and distributed systems differ to centralized systems if you want a quick refresher feel free to check that lesson out but the actual files the files will be stored in a decentralized manner and they can go even one step further and split up the files and store those little packets as such on different nodes all over this crazy ass network and they'll be they'll make it even more secure and the whole concept is the more users so more so more users will equal more bandwidth and storage space because at the end of the day there's more users there's more nodes in our decentralized network so there's more people that can be using it and this ultimately also leads to more security so better security faster just overall faster where it's a file transfer where it's linked to the bandwidth aspect of it or whatever aspect it is it's just generally going to be assumed to be faster another thing is that people are worried that 
that especially these days when you got the government trying to get back doors into products and services whether it's social networks or devices such as phones there might be a case where they want backdoor access into a cloud storage platform so they say all files that get uploaded should go through us the government first we sort of have that you know basic verification system because we can't verify all of them and if we feel like this may pose some threat to national security or that's what they say then we'll open it and take a look but we can open any one that we want but using a decentralized system you can remove the possi the possibility for government backdoors that's a really cool thing because at the end of the day you wouldn't expect anybody to be able to access your files that are in your house whether they're on your computer or whether they're a printed document and you store them securely and neither should they be accessible if they're online so that's the overall concept that these files will be stored along several different nodes and if one node goes down it doesn't matter because there have been cases where there have been new cloud storage platforms that have come along they promised this this and this maybe unlimited cloud storage or maybe it's been really cheap and they've delivered initially and then they've had to tone things back and then sometimes the company's just gone out of business and they've said okay you have x amount of time to download your files if you're lucky and that has obviously been a real problem so imagine if there's a system like this where that isn't an issue that's definitely an attractive prospect so the business side of it the business side of this are applications like AWS, which is Amazon's Amazon Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud, which is essentially a ramped up business version of their consumer side. It has a few other features that well, and Microsoft Azure, Microsoft. Azure. So all of these can be used to store your websites information and all of this will be decentralized. So what you can do, you can have databases on these platforms and these platforms can be linked up to your website so maybe i've got this crazy new social network and it's got a, it's got two billion users which is roughly what facebook has i think it's actually more than that now but yeah let's have this really cool social network and i could store the the website's information the files the user information all that stuff decentralized instead of being on our server so it's essentially the concept that we was talking about here but for company and website information. And there's a product already out that you can check out called Store J. So Store J, so check this out. I'm creating this video in November 2017. This company may or may no longer be around depending on when you're watching it, but check it out, Store J, it's a paid system it's a paid system which is a competitor to aws and all of these it says it's cheaper obviously on their website they're going to say that and maybe for, and obviously for certain packages and certain scenarios it probably is i don't know how cheap it is if you keep scaling up and how good it actually is but this is a decentralized system that you can well use right now for your business and maybe not this but a platform similar to this could be free eventually using what we were talking about yeah so more users could be a more user more bandwidth scenario so once the ball gets rolling it'll have like a snowball effect and there'll be so many users there that they won't practically have to charge and they could charge for other features potentially and this just could be free so scalable scalable with more users 
So that's the consumer and business side done. There's something else I want to discuss, and that's generic, aka what a data storage backed by blockchain, how that could impact the consumer and the business side. So it could be auto auto linked to smart contracts. So smart contracts something that will execute and automatically based on a certain condition. And this is a very, very powerful concept within blockchain based platforms. And so what it could be, maybe it could be I'm transferring a file, but I only want it to occur after a certain date. And after a no a certain date, they can no longer access it. So a little time period for them to be able to access this file. Using smart contracts, this could automatically be initiated. So anything with any condition, this could be used. It could also be linked to the payment systems that we have several videos. So feel free to check them out which cover all of the blockchain implementation of payment with cryptocurrency whether that's access based or ownership based so access would be something like okay if i have these files and you can access them if you pay for it and as long as the money's coming in based on so say if they have to pay half a bitcoin every month to access these files and i just check okay they are paying it they have this amount of time to access it after their date has passed. Have they paid for another month? If not, then it automatically gets cut off. So, is, so this is linking in with the smart contract side. And the ownership could be potentially for sort of like intellectual property. So if I'm selling intellectual property, if payment has occurred, it will automatically get transferred. And because there is an audit trail, audit trail, using public ledgers we can see who paid what who actually owns it so there should ultimately ultimately be less disputes around intellectual property so that's it this has been a video on data storage and the use cases of blockchain within it if you have any questions feel free to reach out and as usual, thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in my next lesson.